hi guys welcome to another class on investment appraisal in this class we are moving to international investment appraisal as you can see on the screen thank you so much guys for always watching my videos please always like this video even if you don't drop a comment it's not nice to have 50 people watching a video and only 10 people will like it please if you find value kindly like this video okay so i said we're moving to international investment appraisal now international investment appraisal is a subtopic under investment appraisal and basically the concept is just like doing business in a foreign land that's just what it means so international investment appraisal is evaluating investments that is done in a foreign land okay so there are various ways of actualizing international expansion or there are various ways of investing in a foreign land okay so i'll just list the various ways which you could be asked in an icon exam question or acca if you're reading for acca you could have um representative it could be a representative an agent or it could be a branch it could be a subsidiary it could be strategic alliance it could be joint venture so you guys can just read up on these ones and let us explain the financial aspects okay so the financial issues important financial issues in investment appraisal that a financial manager should take into consideration are just four major things right exchange rates exchange rates please ignore any noise exchange rates the next thing is what taxation the next thing is transfer pricing transfer pricing and the last thing is what exchange control these are the four major issues you will see in an investment appraisal question that makes it different from the regular investment appraisal does it make sense yes so we'll start from exchange rates now exchange rates is the ratio of one country's currency to another country's currency right so just like nigeria to us which is very common because you might be a nigerian watching this you know that 520 naira is equal to one dollar right so in a typical question you something like naira to dollar 520 this naira here is the counter currency these are things you need to know that's what i'm explaining to this is the counter currency while this dollar is the base currency now how do you know counter and base currency the base currency is always having one okay when you see something in a question naira to dollar equals 520 it means 520 naira is given to go get one dollar so whichever currency carries one beside it the invisible one beside it is the base currency right now when you are converting on that ex exchange which we are still explaining you need to understand conversion how do you convert right whenever you are converting to counter currency you multiply this is a rule an explainable rule it just makes you faster when you know it by rules whenever you are converting to base currency you divide right whenever you are converting to base currency you divide so let's say now as a nigerian you want to pay one million naira right you want to pay one million naira you want to know the amount in dollar you would divide you say one million naira divided by 520 the exchange rate they gave you why because you're converting to base currency do you understand does it make sense if 520 naira equal to one dollar this is a longer method therefore one million naira will be equal to one million times one dollar divided by 520 can you see that's where that rule came from you divide one million also one million divided by 520 times one will still give you the same answer okay so whenever you're converting to counter currency you always multiply whenever you're converting to base currency you always divide another thing you need to know under exchange rates is quotes right there are two types of quotes we have direct quotes we have direct quotes and we have indirect quotes okay so direct quotes means exactly like this 520 naira to one dollar so direct quote means when you are giving multiple units of a home currency to get a foreign currency so the moment i say 0 0.006 dollar equal to one naira this has become an indirect quote right because the assumption here is that the home currency is nigeria okay so in every question you always know the home currency and the foreign currency the home currency is the business owner maybe there's a subsidiary in the foreign currency okay so whenever you have multiple units right maybe you have um, let's just use 200 dollars even if i know it's not possible for 200 dollars to be equal to one naira 
right? Because Naira is a weak currency. $200 equals to one Naira. This is an indirect quote. I'm trying to explain direct quotes and indirect quotes, right? So when you have multiple units of a home currency equal to one unit of a foreign currency, that is a direct quote, okay? So the moment you have multiple units of a foreign currency giving you one unit of a home currency, that is an indirect quote. It makes sense. So always a direct quote is the usual Naira to dollar. The way we state it in Nigeria, that will 520 Naira equals to one dollar, okay? Now, there's also another thing you need to understand under exchange rate, and that is prediction of um, currencies, right? Prediction of exchange rates, right? Not prediction of currencies. That is prediction of exchange rates, right? So if, for example, they tell you that 520 Naira equals to $1, right? Maybe this is today's rate, which is called the spot rate. These, are, these things, these explanations will just help you to know the terminologies so that when you see questions, you know what they're talking about. So this is the spot rate. Spot rate means today rate. So if you want to know the forward rate, you want to know the rate in a year time, in two years time, there are different methods that you can use. You can use what? The purchasing... Let me just abbreviate, please. You can use the PPP, purchasing power parity method. And number two, you can use the IRP, interest rate parity method or approach, right? The purchasing power parity focuses on what? The inflation. It focuses on the inflation of the... Um, two currencies or two countries involved while the interest rate focuses on what while the interest rate parity focuses on the interest rates of the two countries involved right so for this formula to get the rate in the year time don't forget that we are trying to predict exchange rate like not the forward rate okay the spot rate you always know it today's rate is 520 naira to one dollar so let's say you want to know the rate in the year time if you are using the purchasing um, power parity it means they will give you the inflation rate of both us and Nigeria. So let's say they tell you that Nigeria inflation rate is let's say seven percent, while U.S. inflation rate is let's say two percent. Can you see that? It means that the formula is what forward rate, which will be the rate in a year time. Just call it S one equal to S zero. That's today's rate, spot rate, multiplied by one plus the inflation rate of the counter currency. I've explained what counter and base currency is over one plus the inflation rate of the base currency can you see so it means that to know the rate in a year time it will be s1 equals today's rate is what 520 multiplied by one plus inflation rate of the counter currency what is the counter currency here the counter currency is naira right because base currency is one that is carrying one so the counter currency the inflation rate is what seven percent 0 0.07 over one plus 0 0.02 Right, so if you put that in your calculator, you have 1.07 divided by 1.02. Can you see that? Multiply by 520. So you have 545 naira. It means in a year time, based on the inflation in both countries, we will have to give 545 naira to get one dollar. It's obvious now. Look at Nigeria's inflation rate. Look at US. Look at US inflation rate. Right. So, it definitely, Nigeria is the weaker currency. So, in some questions, they can also put it in a way that they won't give you interest or um, in, um, inflation rate. If you were given interest rates instead, it would be interest rates you put there. This is just the same formula. It's just that here, you have what? Interest. Interest. You know, I'm using this one to represent inflation. And I'm using this one to represent interest. So, today's rate, spot rate, multiplied by 1 plus interest rate of the counter currency over 1 plus interest rate of the base currency. That makes sense. So now, I was saying that sometimes they won't give you interest rate and base currency. They just tell you that every year, the Nigerian currency will weaken by 10%. Hmm? They'll tell you that it will weaken by 10%. Or they'll tell you that every year, the dollar currency will strengthen by 10%. Right? So it seems that by the end of year one, this dollar rate, right, it would, it would have been strengthened by... Um, ten percent. Obviously, naira is the weaker currency. So to strengthen this one by ten percent, what it means is that you will increase this one by ten percent. So that would be five hundred and twenty multiplied by one point one. You know, one point one means you are increasing something by ten percent, right? One point one. That is one hundred and ten percent. When you multiply by one point one, that would be equal to what one dollar. So five twenty. Five twenty times one point one. That will give you. 572 after year one you have 572 naira to one dollar by year two they say every year to be strengthened right to be 572 times 1.1 you have what 
30 naira to one dollar see this one keeps increasing because you are giving more naira to get one dollar see how much you are giving of your own currency to get one dollar that that is what it means for dollar to be strengthened so they tell you that dollar is is strengthened by a particular rate what it means is that it should be increasing um the counter currency by that particular rate i don't know if it makes sense when we are solving questions i feel like you understand so i think that's all i've explained on exchange rate so let me clean off exchange rates from there right now let's move to taxation taxation is very important in international investment appraisal why because different countries have different fiscal arrangements in nigeria now our tax rates can be like 20 percent for small companies 30 percent for large companies in the us or any other country it could be 40 percent it could be 50 percent so because taxation is a sensitive issue in business like tax is a legal or is a compulsory levy you want to make sure as an as a business owner that your um Profit is not suffering tax in one country and also suffering tax in another country. Do you understand? So let's say as a Nigerian now, you want to start a business, maybe in the US. That US is what? The source country. Because you're doing a business in the US. So let's say this is the US, right? That would be the source country. You as a Nigerian, your that country is your country is what? The destination country. Because that's where the money will come back to. You want to go and source for your profits in the US, right? So let's say in the US now. Their tax rate, let's say their tax rate in the US, for example, say 40%. And let's say our taxation in Nigeria is let's say 30%. You know, when you make profits in the US, they are going to tax them at 40%. They will pay tax there on that business because the business is resident in the US. They will pay tax at 40%. By the time you bring that money to the destination country, which is Nigeria, they will not pay tax because their tax rate is 30%. They've already paid 40%. On that profit so that profit will not come and suffer another 30 percent tax this is the first scenario now let's do another scenario whereby the us they are paying 40 percent tax but in our country nigeria the destination country the country that owns that money let's say their tax rate is 40 percent this is another scenario scenario two in this situation that profit will not suffer tax again because it's 40 percent here and 40 percent here now let's say in the us they are paying tax at 40 percent this is the third scenario but in nigeria let's say they are paying tax at 50 percent you can see that this profit, right, has suffered 40%. You can see that the profit that was made in US has suffered 40% tax. By the time it comes to Nigeria, it must suffer an additional 10% tax. So in most questions, or most of the questions I've seen on international investment appraisal, is this third scenario that you see, whereby the source country, the tax is lower than the tax rate of the destination country, and you have to do additional tax of 10 percent does it make sense because when you bring the money there's still an extra 10 percent that has not been charged see sfm and assumption so you need to you see why those um, beginning explanations is necessary so that when we are solving you know why we are doing all those kind of things even if i know that i'll still explain further so i think that is all the issue on taxation okay another issue on taxation is that sometimes taxation can be one year in arrears which, which is something you know when you tell you that taxation is one year in arrears it means that year one tax will be applied in year two year two tax will be applied in year three year three tax will be applied in year four year four tax will be applied in year five that's what it means for taxation to be in arrears which i know that we already understand then the next thing we can go to is transfer pricing so we are done with taxation now transfer pricing is also a very important thing in investment appraisal why because most companies can hide under transfer pricing to reduce tax payments yeah because as a subsidiary for example let's say like i said you're a business owner in nigeria let's say you set up a business in ghana then you now say oh i transferred materials to them i transferred raw, um, raw materials to them let me put a scenario for you right let's say for example you have a business in Ghana, or let's say in um, US, you have a business in US whereby they made sales of, in year one, say they made sales of $5,000, in year two, they made sales of, say, $8,000, and in year three, they made sales of, say, $11,000, right? This is their sales. Definitely, to achieve these sales, they got some raw materials. So you as the country in Nigeria, let's say you're the one that transported raw materials to them. They will now say raw materials, right? Let's say raw materials was 2000 year. Raw materials was 3,000 year and raw materials was 4,000 year. You now get what your, let's say your profit, 3,000. You get profit of 5,000 here and say profit of 7,000 here. Is that right? So that is the profit. You will now tax this profit, right? You know that because this is a related party transaction, it definitely, this raw materials definitely came from the country in Nigeria, right? 
and to you guys in nigeria it is a sales you sold raw materials let's say you set up a business that is manufacturing that is say that is doing petrol in the u.s but from nigeria you sell crude oil to them is your subsidiary that you set up in the u.s right so this profit now they don't want to charge tax on their profit let's say their own tax rate is say 40 percent here 40 percent of this would be say 1200 40 percent of this would be 2000 40 percent of this would be 2800 am i right yeah so that would be the tax right now this tax is reduced why is this tax reduced it is reduced because they took into consideration the raw materials this is a related party transaction now because they reduced they exempted this one from tax here Therefore, the parent company, which is one in Nigeria, must recognize this 2,000, 3,000, and 4,000 as a sales so that it can push up their profits for it to be taxed. Now, because as financial managers, you are aware of transfer price in relationship among related parties, you need to take that into consideration when you are doing investment appraisal. Okay? Now, transfer pricing might not be only raw materials. Most times, it comes in the form of management fees. You see the subsidiary charging management fees here sometimes it can be royalties sometimes it can be consultation fees and different things they'll give you in the question they are going to solve like two or three questions right maybe in the next class because i'm already tired so we are done with everything on transfer pricing and it makes sense now the next thing we are going to do is exchange control there's not much on exchange control now exchange control relates with how companies make sure that they don't bring back enough profit they don't repatriate enough profit to the parent company right so now you, are, you have a business in the us you have a business in the us and then the parent country is maybe in nigeria here right so exchange control focuses on ways that these ones here would not bring the profit back home for it to be taxed the everything they're running away from is tax right and also these people are concerned that they don't want the gdp of their country to reduce you won't make money in us i want to take it back to nigeria you want your own economy also to boom do you understand so there are different ways is through interest and thin capitalization they can achieve that through interest and thin capitalization also through all those royalties and management fees that i explained just different ways that can reduce the, the bottom line is how can they reduce their profit so much that there will be nothing to take back to the um, parent company that's just the concept behind it now this interest and thing capitalization is one only one i'm going to explain is this thing capitalization is a way of making sure that you have more debt than equity you know in a typical company the capital structure is usually equity and debt right so they can have debt of like 95 percent an equity of five percent and it might even be the same people you know the person that is the equity holder is the one that borrowed the company money to do business so because you have more debt you will pay interest at very high rates imagine you have only equity of say say like equity of let's say like five million in, in a company and then you have debt of going to like 225 million the interest you use to service a debt of 225 million is so high and it will be exempted from tax because interest is a tax allowable deduction so it will drastically reduce the profit to an extent that there will be nothing is it dividend they want to pay for five million naira that they will, do you understand so that's what interest and thing capitalization is all about so those are just those are just the things that you might see in um a typical investment appraisal question that i've already explained so let's move right into solving questions so